video 38, about 24 minutes in, I look up and see some glass, but can't quite figure out how to get it. Turns out, it's simply something that I overlooked. I went back in and went on down and around, but had I just looked to my left when I first entered, I would have seen a ladder. The ladder takes you up top, where there is a mob spawner, and a chest. Video 40, one minute in, I find a giant cupcake. And if I had actually stopped to read the sign, it says cup quake, not cup cake. This is a reference to a YouTube user who goes by the name Cupquake and makes Minecraft videos. Video 40, 11 minutes in. Now the backstory of this whole map says that the only way to get into the giant tower, the Black Tower, is by crafting the legendary diamond pickaxe. So, I kind of made my own backstory for this just to go along with it, but in the actual backstory, you were supposed to get the three diamonds so you could make a diamond pickaxe. This is then so you can open the obsidian door at the front of the bedrock tower, the black tower. Video 13, 25 seconds in. Now, I wanted to just get in this minecart and go and play my own music in the background, just some of the Minecraft morning music. But of course, Minecraft actually threw kind of a wrench in the works and started playing its own music in the background at just the wrong time. But in the end, I guess it worked out. I just decided I'm probably going to be best off just letting Minecraft play its own music. There were some nicer items back there. I think there were some diamond boots at, in one of the various chests along the way. But overall, I was, well in, I was well geared enough not to really worry about it. Video 41, 13 minutes in, I finally arrive at the Black Tower. I think it's called the Black Tower anyway. Oh my. Now, a lot of people were kind of I yelling at me, I guess you could say, really to just follow the compass, ignore everything else, and follow the compass. No, because that would have taken me to straight to the Black Tower. Just swim out in the water and go over there. And I could have. The tricky part here is balancing showing off the map or the mod or the like and conveying my narrative. And admittedly, I think Karast was probably the worst part of me conveying my narrative. I did a terrible job all around, from entering to leaving the world and everything in between. I think a better way... I did simply show off the map, and I think it sh I showed it off fairly well, but a better way for me to have conveyed the narrative was potentially for me to wander over here to the Black Tower and climb my way up and actually see that obsidian do, door that I could not go through. Then I would have had a reason to go back and find the other things. Maybe get a note from the uh, map maker people that actually said I needed the legendary diamond pickaxe to enter. There's a lot of things I could have done, and overall, I kind of dropped the ball. Video 41, right near the end. With um, Karast, the story then is that essentially the entire invasion came from the nether through that portal at the top. So everything that you had to do was go and destroy that portal, and that put an end to it. And it turned the Black Tower back into the glorious, glowing White Tower. And that was how it was supposed to go. As far as my own narrative goes, it probably would have made more sense for me to try to go through the Nether Portal. But instead, I came to the bit completely baseless conclusion that everything was coming through the portal and it needed to be closed. This, once again, comes down to me doing everything I can to show off this particular map but failing in the process to portray my own narrative. 
However, at the very end of this entire thing is where I kick my own narrative back in. This is where the sign maker once again finds us, and from here I've got a solid plan. I'll add that the sign maker was not at first the official name of our offender. He never actually had an official name, I never bothered. It was one of the fans in the comments that referred to him as the sign maker, and I really liked it. Now right up here at the very end, in trying to take out this nether portal, I actually ran into a little bit of trouble, because all of the gas kept turning off the ender portal with the explosions. So I had to do a fair amount of editing for it to stay on until I broke that block. Video 42, right at the beginning, the teleportation sound effect was taken from VVV, VVV, or the letter V six times, whichever you prefer. And now we are back under the control of the sign maker proper. We still have our compass, so that is going as intended. This map, Light Jumper, is intended to be a map entirely put in darkness, and I wanted to do this map because I wanted to do a parkour map. Though, in the end, I didn't really like the parkour that this map made you do, because all of it they made you do was very slow and spaced and taking your time. I wanted something a little bit quicker. My goal in choosing this map was simply that I wanted to show off a little bit of every map that I possibly could show off. All of the different kinds of maps that there are in Minecraft a parkour map being one of them. At this point, the sign maker is still simply a uh, malevolent god, I guess you could say. That fact didn't really change, and I didn't really further the narrative on my own beyond the fact that he's simply a malevolent god toying with us now. Probably until the beginning of... Better Dungeons. So I'll speak a little bit more on what changed come then. But right now, this is pretty much what you would expect. This was created to test my own abilities, and for him to amuse himself watching me overcome great obstacles. Video 42, 7 minutes 50 seconds in, there's a fade cut there, and I honestly don't remember why. Given the lava, I would assume it's because I actually slipped and died? But the previous rooms didn't seem hard enough that I wouldn't have just re-recorded from the checkpoint if I did. That would have been a much better yes. cutoff it, point. It may have been that I was simply unable to because of the falling sand that doesn't reset if you go back to a checkpoint. Video 42, 9 minutes, 30 seconds in. I get, rid I get a little testy with the sign, and I think I was overacting there a little bit. For the most part, a lot of the signs yes, by I default kind that. of prodded you and toyed with you, and at the time, I no, didn't no, think... Are. At the time, I didn't I really think I it did through. The, the, the really what was written on the signs didn't really seem to fit with the narrative. They didn't seem to fit with the sign maker that I had okay. come up with at the time, some kind of malevolent Spencers. god playing with you My like that. At the time, I imagined him being a lot more calculating. So if I go to the left, no real personality, just all like, business. And these that. signs showed a lot more personality than that. But in the end, with my portrayal of him as more of a child, I think they actually may make a little bit more sense now. But it's still something that I think I would have edited, given the chance to do it again. Video 42, 14 minutes, 50 seconds in. Really, just because I took notice here of how the music skipped, a lot of that's because time passes. I mean, it's Minecraft. Time passes. So and to sleep in a bed, it kind of has to be nighttime. I wanna go home. The instructions to this map actually said you are allowed to change day-night cycle, so you can sleep in the bed, so you don't have to stand around and wait on it. But that's not really something I could do in video. So I'd usually walk up, click on the bed, not jump in, set time to night, jump in again, and then click, 
cl uh, cut out the in-between. Video 43, one minute in, when I'm making all of these jumps. This is kind of where, as I mentioned before, this particular map slows you down so you can't go very fast when trying to make the jumps. And though the viewer had a little bit of a harder time than I did seeing, I could see pretty well in the dark. I was mostly putting up the torches for the viewer's sake. And I knew that without the torches, if I didn't bother, then I could just run and jump the whole way up most of these without too much trouble. I will say, though, I did fall a uh, fair number of times, like right there. And every time yeah, I fell, there. I wanted this whole thing to be done as legit as possible. So every time I fell, I walked my butt right back up and did that again yeah, every there. single time. Oh. Right up until the end. At the very top of this entire tower, probably the last rotation, I just got so fed up with it falling like four times right there that I just started tapping over into creative mode and flying back up. I was done at that point. One thing that I absolutely hate about difficulty in general is when you're forced to do something you've already done over and over and over again every time you fail. I just hate that about difficulty. It's, it feels very much like a, I've already done this, why do I have to do it again? Just to get back to the part that I'm actually stuck at. 43, video 43, 7 minutes in, talking about the falling into the void and how that just occurred to me. It just occurred to me because when I fell three seconds ago, that's what happened. Video 43, 13 minutes in. This giant room lights up. Now, the parkour in this room originally spelled out a phrase, and the actual parkour was hard to see. It was just something like, congratulations for finishing, or something of the such. Of course, it was odd and out of place, and it didn't work for the purposes of my narrative, so I ended up wiping most of the text out and leaving just the parkour bits. Video 43, right near the end. Originally, this ended by actually dumping you in a very small room, just with the various credits and thank yous on it. I then took that and tried to change it into the tunnel that you would be going down in. Made it get darker and darker as you went in, and we ended up using that as a, tr or I ended up using that as a transition into the next map. Instead of giving it a hard butt end, I even made it slowly taper down, if you see it from the outside. And then that goes directly into the beginning of video 44. Where, is this thing where oh dear. originally in this map, there was actually a little house in the ah. like that was outside that you could walk probably, around and explore and forward. before getting into the minecart and actually taking your second. way down into the course itself. Where's this thing even taking me, though? Now, in the course itself, ah. where am I? I then had to the extend place. that intro bit a little bit, so I had time to fade in and start my own trip oh through the map. Getting through this entire yeah. thing in one go alive sky, was sky. actually more troublesome than you'd Come think. On. There are oh. one or two jumps that are very, very going difficult. Back inside, then? Add to that, I had trouble with the very last little um, oh. cart jump at the very end of the entire map, just because oh, I was having trouble reacting to what Please. I did see before getting right. to the mm -hmm. actual jumping, and it took me like a while to, to really like to remember like to that I had to just act and not dying. Can I act. That's fine, say danger. Video 45, right at the beginning, we begin Escape Craft. I did make a couple oh, edits to Escape yeah. Craft. This is a modified version a of the map. The off. biggest modification that I made was that I replaced the entire map with iron. I replaced all the walls Once with iron. Again, Originally, I it was just stone, and it looked 
a lot like an elaborate cave instead of a very nice constructed, nicely constructed place. All right. I then also took every pl oh. block that had a torch on it, replaced it with glowstone, and that. swapped the glowstone block right. texture right. out for gold texture. The very first room we showed up in was actually obsidian, and I changed that texture then also to resemble the iron texture only with the yeah. palette of obsidian. That was the biggest change I made. The other change I made came in the TNT room and the very final room. Now the original narrative of Escapecraft is that Herobrine had captured you in his caves and he was testing you and running you through the, all of this. And of course the one doing all of this to me was most certainly not Herobrine and most certainly did not have the personality that his Herobrine had on all of the signs. In fact, remembering that I wanted to go with more of a cold and calculated instead of a being with a lot of personality, I removed pretty much every sign that was in Escapecraft. Video 45, 11 minutes, 15 seconds in. I, was I actually a was teacher. a high school math teacher, or I should say more specifically a student teacher right, for a short amount of time. Kind of Though for at a month or two, I was teaching the class entirely on my own. So even if it wasn't for long, I do hold that I did teach high school math for a short while. I do still enjoy the idea of teaching. But that whole story is a story for another time. All that said, I do really enjoy math and the like, and so I wanted to show how to go about actually solving this problem instead of simply guess and checking. Now a couple people have pointed out that an easier way to solve it would have been using something like the quadratic equation, which is indeed true. I just wanted to keep everybody's attention, and I've found through personal experience if you so much as say the words quadratic equation, every student's brain shuts off and they don't hear you anymore. I did cheat this a little bit with guess and check, if only because of the very end. Once I was filling in the gaps and trying to get the actual numbers to fill in the parentheses at the very end of my whole equation, this is a part that I've never actually known a super good way to do. So I've only ever done that last section by guess and check. But the numbers are generally small and simple enough that it's never been an issue even when doing this for a larger number overall. And someone in the comments actually pointed out a much better way of doing that one, so props to them. I was really worried that I was just going to bore everybody to death with this, though, but there was a lot of really positive feedback for it. I tried to get through it as quickly as possible, just because I knew I was probably going to really bore people with it. This is actually my second take on this. I'm pretty sure my first take took about five minutes longer than this one did. Video 45, 18 minutes, 50 seconds in. I think that would have worked a lot better if there was some kind of punishment for getting it wrong. And there wasn't. Maybe the room should have exploded or something, I don't know. But as it was, you could have just flicked switches until something worked. Now the next room, though, is a room that I changed personally. I completely reworked this room. I actually forget what it looked like originally, but I think the biggest dilemma with it originally is that it so just it didn't seem to make any the sense. There was no that. challenge to the puzzle. You didn't have to think or, or do anything. I think you just had to those. light one of the TNT and then jump down this after it. Much lead so I actually intentionally wow. set this up so it would look like if you lit the wrong TNT, it would, it would fall down, blow up the bottom, and then you would only have lava to fall in on the bottom. So I completely reworked this one room. Video 45, 21 minutes, 15 seconds in. 
I'm honestly not entirely sure what's wrong with this room, but a lot of this is seemingly just broken. Maybe the redstone physics changed um, between when the map was made and the current version of Minecraft. But as it stands, a lot of these switches didn't even do anything. I in fact meant to rewire part of it so one section was at least a threat, but I completely forgot, so instead we just got one short path that didn't do anything.